Good evening from Xfinity Center, Maryland, over the UMBC Retrievers, 66-45. I'm Wayne Viner, intern Mason Bruce Bosner, and wearing a Retriever scarf is Don Rough Todd. Bruce, I got one away. thing to say. <laughs> what, what happened, Todd? You were sitting high there for a few minutes. Yeah, well, you know, Maryland wasn't making shots in the first half, and they started making shots in the second half. It's an easy game when the ball goes in the hoop, and Herter got hot. And Hey, Alex maybe threes. maybe the worst half of basketball I've ever seen in this arena. Possibly. 16 points. I mean, 18 points. It rivaled that game against Boston that they lost a few years ago. And number 13 on the UMB. BC side, supposedly one of the best shooters in America for his height range, was short all night, and that made the difference because early, you said it to me, they could have been up by 15. Yeah, maybe, maybe more. I mean, uh, I love number 11, all right, from Puerto Rico, Mora. Is he? But he was excellent. UMBC's a good team. Obviously, with the level of competition they have, they are doing good, and they will do well. Yeah, and, you know, their, their coach is Dave Odom's son, and, and they rely on the three. That's how, they, that's how they build their offense. And I think that maybe it might have been just playing in a big gym like this that sort of it throws that depth perception off just enough that they... That's the excuse. You know what? They were off. That's all it was. It reminded me of an NCAA tournament game, but in the first half... Uh, I never got the attendance, but it was a nice crowd tonight. For this type of game at yeah. this time of the year, is probably Definitely. eight thousand people here. More, probably, I think. I think it was yeah, more. I think it was a little bit more. Yeah, it was more. Seventy six hundred for the women's game last night. Wow, how many were really hit? Really close that to that. Many? Was Great. Close. Wasn't much of a game though, was it? Uh, it was pretty one sided. Okay. Maryland beat Illinois last night in the women's opener. Go ahead, uh, Mason. I just think tonight showed what can happen when you face these injuries. And now Bender, who's already had two ACLs, goes down with a right knee injury. It's going to get interesting coming up in conference play because power forward's looking thin. It was supposedly one of the strongest positions. Look, the Terps are 13-3, and three, and you take that 13-3 and three and throw it out the window. It doesn't mean anything right now. It all starts it's again. It's one and one right now. They play Penn State on Tuesday. Uh, good effort tonight but a good second half effort. But everything changes Tuesday. If they play like this on Tuesday, they will get their heads handed to them. And we're gonna congratulate will. Coach Church on his 400th win. Yeah, well done, Mark. And uh, I wanna, I'm gonna talk about this on the Maven tomorrow, but uh, this Justin Jackson thing and this whole uncertainty about when a guy comes and when he leaves, I think it's getting out of hand. It should be like baseball where a guy, if he can go straight to the pros, he goes to the pros. If he comes to Maryland, we'll call it, he's got to stay two years. Okay, we'll pick this. It's three in baseball. We'll pick this up on the other side of the break. This is the Viner Four Gates postgame show here at Xfinity Center, Maryland over UMBC. We'll be back in a moment. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. So, Todd, an interesting decision comes of a volleyball team that looked on the up, Steve Aird, gone for a team that Maryland beat this year in volleyball, Indiana. Yeah, it's, it's puzzling to everybody associated with the program. Have you talked to Steve yet? I have not. We've exchanged a couple of texts. He promised to call me. He said there's a lot to the story that he can't uh, talk about, but uh, we'll, we'll chat. Uh, so, hey, listen, I know there are a lot of volleyball fans out there, but certainly not like basketball. But this is a hard loss for Maryland because you can't replace this guy that easily. Well, they can promote the assistant coach, Adam Hughes, who has great local connections, a great recruiter. He's coached a lot of these girls in their club. And, and that's what I think the fans have been in an uproar about. It's, Twitter's been exploding with that, actually, today. About hiring him? Hiring Adam Hughes. Yes. That's the first thing I thought, because when you look at a team in any sport that has a recruiting class like they do and is trying to build something, Continuity is what you got to look for, and a lot like Oregon's football team. As soon as they Taggart left for Florida State, they said, "Here's an assistant coach. We're going to keep the recruits going. We're going to keep this mojo going." 
and that's immediately what I thought Maryland volleyball should do. And I think that's that's the route to go. I think Steve, one of the things that attracted Steve to Indiana is they're building a new seventeen million dollar facility for wrestling and volleyball. I'll tell you what, yeah, we've lost so many guys between backage and it just goes on and on. Right, and Chef, I mean, one of the best baseball coaches in the country, and now we lose air, and uh, I don't know what the answer is, but I tell you what, let's talk about Justin Jackson for a minute. It, this is a real tragedy for the kid. Look, he'll survive. I mean, he's not, you know, he's got a, a bum okay, shoulder. I'm really sorry for, I'm really sorry for him. Uh, he's a good kid. Do you think he'll be back, Mason? Yeah, I definitely think he's going to be back, and you said in our last segment that you know, he needed to go to the pro, so we need to make a rule for that. He's He wasn't at that level. Yeah, but I think he would have been drafted. Special guest. Oh Special oh guest. Dino Gregory. Yes, back. Yes, a yes. place exploded when he came back. <laughs> first things first, how's Pop doing? Oh, he actually passed away. But he's, oh, my God. Yes. I'm sorry. That's all right. That was, that was three, three years ago. But, uh, and I didn't know it. He'd be so happy to be here right now because the crowd was loud. The team was playing well, so right. he'd be happy to be here. Yes. All right. What's Dino Gregory doing now? Uh, I actually now live in Seattle with my wife. I just got married this past summer. Congratulations. I, yes, I just retired from professional basketball in Europe and now I work at the YMCA as a sports director. So. Oh, that's life's great. Life's good. Life's good. What do you think of the Terps tonight? It was a little shaky there in the first half. Definitely shaky, but it's always hard playing on Christmas break when everybody's gone. So I know I know the feeling, but we came through the end. It's all that really matters. This kid Morsel, another Baltimore kid, Ooh, yes. he brings it, doesn't he? Every night. I mean, I saw this kid when he was a sophomore in St. Joe, and he was playing, this, playing the same intensity right as he did as a 13 or 15 year old back then. So that kid, he can play. He can what play. do you think of Sticks? Do you think he's got what it takes to uh, come in here and dominate at this level? He has more than what it takes to be here. I mean, Sticks, he's on a different level. When Sticks gets here next year, I think we're going to take the program to another, to another level. He's so that good. Now, I've, I've that watched good. him play, and right. he's tremendous inside. Mm -hmm. The problem is now they're putting two guys on him, and they're killing him. Right, right. So it, it, you can't really tell how good he is. Right. Dino, when you look at this team right now, and there's so much hype about the next class, what are they thinking right now? Because you have all the Twitter hype and the social media mm -hmm. all about sticks and Aaron Wiggins and those guys. Uh, they're not thinking about that at all. They're thinking about this year. They're not thinking about guys coming in next year. We had guys coming in, it's like Jordan Williams coming in next year. We weren't thinking about him. We were thinking about now. Of course, they're excited for them to come in next year, but they're ready for the season to go right now. How do you generate the intensity that you guys had? You weren't the most athletic. I don't Baltimore. Think. He's a Baltimore I know, dude. But I mean, That's where Marshall is. <laughs> it's at Baltimore blood. But right it's it was the whole team brought in intensity. Right. And sometimes you watch this team and you, you want somebody else to play like Fernando and Marshall. Is right. that something that you guys brought or is that a, a coaching thing or how'd you get that? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, we had Coach Williams, who was the king of bringing it. We had Landon, Gravis. I mean, we had guys who really brought every day in practice and games. And, and Daryl has cut the same cloth of those guys. And um, when they play hard, they can be hard to beat. So, now If we had a basketball here, which we don't, could you still uh, dunk it with some oh, style? Yeah. For sure. For sure. For oh, sure. yeah. Yes, for, do you yes. still play a little bit? Or you I play in the rec league out in Seattle. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a retirement phase, so I still play, but I'm not like, like I used to be. Well, let me tell you something. Number one, I miss your dad, and I'm sorry to hear that. He's a great guy. Congratulations. Looks like you picked out a beautiful girl here to marry. And, uh, you know, I miss seeing you. I really do. It's always great having you come back to College Park. Yes. It's a joy being here. appreciate you guys having me on. I love it. Thank you. As always. Thank yes. you, my friend. Thank you Take care. I appreciate it. Yes. All right. Thank you, guys. Go Terps. Go Terps. All right. So to wrap it up for the year, we will be back Tuesday night. We'll be Sports Maven tomorrow right. in the nest. Big game Sunday for the Ravens. Right. You're going to New York we'll tomorrow to yeah. see the Giants and the Redskins. For whatever reason, I don't know. But the Redskins are trying to go to 8-8. Eight eight. What, eight eight. what a eight. tremendous, successful, okay. tremendously successful year. No, I got to well, say Bruce, that. Bruce, now that the year is going to turn, is it time to move on with this lacrosse thing? Can we no, move on to next year? No. no, never? We hang with this championship until the final four this coming year. We are champions, and you know what? I got a good feeling about this upcoming season. I did not, now I do, but uh, what the heck. That certainly was a highlight of the year. It wasn't even a close second. Women's winning as well. Winning all the championships, as you can see in the trophy case. And 
and the Torton Award and the Conference Championship. We swept the whole thing, but it's time to wrap it up here. So thanks for watching. Happy New Year to everyone. We'll be back here on the Xfinity Center floor after Maryland takes on One last State. thing. Thank you to Viner Consulting. Thank you to Jordan and his brother Mason here. And to Meyer Consulting. And to Meyer Consulting. And we say thank you to Connie for tagging along <laughs> with you all the time. And it's a tremendous task. It is following right. us around. Good evening All from Xfinity Center. Take care.